Hello guys, welcome, my name's Richard and this is my 2024 Model 3 Performance here in the UK. I've had this car for 11 days now, covered over a thousand miles in it, so I've got to know it really well. And in this video, I'm going to cover everything I really like about this car. Now, I've always got to balance up the videos and I'm always very transparent and realistic and I always give the negatives and the things that niggle or annoy me as well. But I've put them into a separate video and we're releasing these two videos at the same time. So if you want to see everything that annoys me about this car, things that I'm not quite happy with, then check out that other video because this one's about how great the 2024 Model 3 performance is. One of the first things I want to point out really, I think, is the weight of this car compared to other performance EVs. So a competitor to the Model 3 performance might be the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. It's a lot heavier, Taycan. Audi e-tron GT, a lot heavier, typically three or 400 kilograms heavy in this car. And what that does is it does feel really light, very nimble. The other cars are also very fast. They can also handle very well, but this does have a lightness about it that you can really feel and appreciate. It doesn't feel like a blob. It feels really nimble on its toes and always ready to go. So I've had all the Tesla Model 3 performances previously. We still run a 2019 one in the company. Clint, he's on 107,000 miles. He's done us proud. So it's still got good battery health, we're still using day in, day out, still an original brake pads, and we've done track days with it. So Model 3 performance fan, yes I am. Previously I had the kind of niggles that, okay, well on the road the ride is quite firm. When you're doing those longer days, I mean you want a sporting car with good body control, it's always been fast, but it would have that firm, slightly crashy ride at times. And yet when you went onto a track, it actually then lost its composure a little bit, I found. However, certainly the on-road ride has been looked at with this car because we now have adaptive dampers. The track side of things I'm going to be testing later this week, so make sure you're subscribed and you'll see a video about what this is like on the fastest racing circuit in the UK. And that's coming soon. But on the road, the ride comfort. So this is, this is probably the biggest aspect with this. And if you're thinking of changing from a previous Model 3 to this, that's what you're going to notice the difference in is that we now have adaptive dampers so I can choose if I want a more comfortable ride or a firmer ride and they're good. It does exactly what it says on the tin in that it now doesn't have that crashiness through the cabin that you could get. Those little ridges in roads, the potholes are absorbed much better. It's much more compliant so it's still not like a wafty car. I mean a car like a uh, Porsche Taycan with air suspension is more wafty as a sports car even than this, but it's just comfortable now. It's just okay. It's not sort of niggling. It's not jarring. It doesn't translate for your body and fat shame you and make your fat jiggle around. So the suspension is great. The handling is lovely. It turns in nicely. You haven't even got to be peeling down a road super fast trying to get away from the police. It, like, it handles really nicely. The Highland anyway just has that slightly nicer handling feel compared to the previous cars, which were good anyway. But the Highland as a 2024 model overall really does kind of bring all the last bits of finishing together. It's a shame it wasn't there when it first came out because it would have been a perfect car really and then it very nearly is today. Uh, so the ride and handling, I'm going to give it big praise here and now. I could do lots of flashy shots of it driving down the road, but it just is nice, a really nice balance and good to be able to adjust the dampers. In fact, even you could put them in a slightly firmer damper setting on the road and it's still more comfortable than before. So that's good. You've got to probably balance up this. Is it worth changing from a previous model to this? Well, it's always that cost thing, isn't it? £60,000 at the moment for one of these. You can get the early Model 3 performances on the used market now for down to about £20,000. A 2021, more like £25,000, £30,000, £35,000. Uh, so there is that balance of weighing things up. And if you do the, you know, thinking of changing, I think you would appreciate just how the, the ride and the suspension refinements come along. Is it quiet in the cabin? Yes, it is. Is it well built? Yes, it is. I do find these wider tyres. So now we've got staggered tyres compared to the previous performances at the same size tyre around. He's got 275s at the back and it does pick up tyre roar on some rough road surfaces. But all in all, it's just a nice, pleasant place to be in that cabin. And I wanted to get out of the way because that's probably one of the biggest differences to sort of tackle uh, comparing it to the previous Model 3. Compared to sort of other cars, oh my God, like, you know, point to point, it's hard to think of a car on a narrow, small road, if you want to drive hard, that could be anything quicker than this. The grip it can generate, it's instant acceleration and pull as it comes out of the corners is immense. Now Tesla came in 0-60 of 2.9 seconds with this, that's with one foot rollout. 
And the good news is, despite the fact we get the 460 horsepower version because we probably had the 79 kilowatt battery, the US gets a 510. That might make a difference at higher speeds indeed, but actually uh, we did manage to pull using a draggy 2.93, including the one foot rollout with this car. So it is quicker than those previous cars. It does feel like it launches harder off of the line. I think when you're rolling, I, it's hard to tell a difference then. I don't think there's a massive amount, and I think it is a little bit sensitive to the state of charge of the battery, uh, but things don't need to be faster than this. It is fast. So I've covered 1100 miles and I'm collecting bugs on the front, so excuse that, it's white, it will show it. But I chose white because it's really the easiest color to maintain. My last one was black and I love the look of them in black, but black's harder to keep it looking uh, clean and smear free. You gotta wash it very carefully and white's a bit more carefree. So, and I think as well in white, it looks good in this color. I think every time I see it sort of coming from the front and you see this, this different front bumper compared to long range of standard, the front splitter, these new Highland headlights, I think it's a good looking car. I like the look of it. I like the look of it in white. It also works well with our stickers and stuff on it. So in white, brilliant. It looks nice in the ultra red as well, but ultra red is a lot more expensive and it's more difficult to repair if it ever needs a bit of paint and stuff like that. You've got to look after it a lot more. Why it's a bit more carefree. And if we ever go to shows and stuff, we can kind of quickly wipe this down without getting smears all over it. The other thing I was impressed with actually is these alloy wheels. So again, a bit dirty now. Uh, so maybe we can get a shot with a nice and clean gins. But in the first shots I saw of the new Model 3 Performance, I thought, what are those wheels? They look stupid. Uh, they just look like aero caps like we've had before. But uh, I like the Uber Turbo ones, they were lovely. But in person, I like these wheels. I haven't had a chance yet to take these uh, aero covers out, which you can do. But in person, the wheels, I think, look really nice. So that's good. Tesla claim they've upgraded the brakes a little bit. I mean, the disc size of the disc and the caliper basically looks the same. They've also put the pads in it that were part of the track pack upgrade before into this. I've not had a chance to do a vast amount of fast braking, but I have done one of those film shoots on a runway. I can say that even at higher speeds, it feels really good. Again, I'll be testing it later this week on track, the fastest circuit in the UK. So I'll be braking from probably about 145 miles per hour. And I can tell you again there of my thoughts, but so far the brakes seem good. On the road initially, they did have a bit of a dead feel, but I think they've been bedding in, probably braking from 140 miles an hour a few times has helped, but I would say the brakes don't seem to feel any heat loss yet, but let's try it on a track on, later on this week. Also, like walking up to it from the back, I think it looks really smart. So these slimmer lights look good. We've got a different diffuser down here. This new badge looks nice as well, the different lettering. I guess I would have kind of liked slightly more sort of flared stance arches for a performance model just to differentiate it from the side, a slightly more squat aggressive look. But again, it looks nice. Those chunkier tires at the back look good. Do they cost you an efficiency? Yes, I'll come on to that in a bit. But I think it's a good looking car. And again, I've actually been liking it. Every time I walk up to it, I've gone, yeah, that's, that's all right, that is. That's all right. So if you were buying one of these, which color would you pick? Let me know in the comments below. Did you? <laughs> We now have the automatic boot opening, so because I'm near the back of the car, stationary with my phone in my hand, it's open the boot. That's quite a convenient feature, and that's been working nicely. However, what I was about to talk to you about is that there is now a tow bar option available for this car. I just noticed in Tesla store that you can buy the tow bar. Now, on the performance model, which you could never get a tow bar on before, well, there's a handful of got into the UK, but basically you can never get it. It is now available retrofit from Tesla. I think it's about 1,100 pounds. We'll find a clip from the Tesla store and put it up on the screen here. But it's good to know you can have a tow bar, 500 kilogram rating though, which is less than the standard and long range. But very handy, put some bike racks on there. Brilliant. Whilst I'm here, the boots are pretty good size space, by the way, that's all right. I'd like a hatchback, but the boot is nice and large and we go away as a family and everything fits in nicely. It's all easy. I want to mention a thing called charge on solar. So now within the Tesla app, you can set, if you have solar, production like we do on our roof here uh, you can set that the car charges to x amount whatever time and then keeps topping up as long as there's surplus solar energy available and that's available directly in the app and you can control it remotely and it works brilliantly so the car can just be here whilst i'm at work now if the clouds come over in a minute it won't keep taking from the electricity here and start pulling from the grid it will pause and then it will go back to charging on solar when the solar is available and it will vary the charge rate so it's only taken from the solar and it's great other cars don't do that you can get chargers that control that but to have that control from the car is brilliant and it's seamless with our 
solar panels, our Tesla batteries and Tesla gateway. So really nice, efficient way to keep topping up your car on days like this. The Tesla app's also great for just starting the air conditioning and cooling the seats down before you get in the car, which on a hot day like this is fantastic. One of my pet hates is getting into a hot car. I cannot stand it. And the car's reading 30 degrees there, but I can get in this now. It's been parked here, it's been cooling down. The air conditioned seats are on and it is already lovely and cool in here. So let's go inside. So yes, the air conditioned seats I actually really appreciate. Uh, it's good to have them. You've got three stages of cooling, but I'd normally just have it on one and it uh, just ventilates nicely, stops you getting a sweaty back. And of course the seats are new and they're more supportive now. So we've got bigger bolsters here and here and it stops you sliding around in the seat. I would like to see the extendable thigh support and sometimes it's sort of hard to get your shoulders back a bit and a softer headrest would be nice, but the seats are a lot better than before. They're much firmer, they're not squidgy like the previous ones, and the previous ones you could just slide out the side of when you were driving a bit more enthusiastically. And the whole cabin here, I really like. It's minimal, it's neat, it's smart, it's good materials, it's well made, I've not had any issues or uh, complaints about build quality at all on this car. The centre console as well, just good, just too easy to use phone chargers, not like some other cars where you got to feed it into a little gap in here or something like that. Nice big storage in here, cup holders there, big storage in here. There's only one thing I would like to see that isn't here, sunglasses holder. I'd like somewhere to put my sunglasses, maybe up here so they're out of the way or over here, but typically you end up kind of putting them in the cup holder here or here, so I guess a sunglasses holder would be nice to have. Uh, the screen, nice and easy to use. It is actually in the Highland cars ever such a smidge uh, bigger and better than the previous Model 3s. You won't really notice that, but again, lovely clear graphics. The latest software now means you can swipe this or show that bigger and have that across, and it shows some good graphics. It shows you all the cones and wheelie bins and other cars and vans and cyclists. The software as a whole is brilliant. And one of the times I like this is actually like we just had a weekend away in Cornwall, and maybe you're traveling around an area, and it's just so nice and easy to grab the screen like this and go, oh, do you know what? If we follow this coast road along here, that's cool. Uh, so we could go there and actually, you know, I'm feeling a bit hungry. So let's find out where we could perhaps go and eat. And you're doing this all straight on the, on the map on the car. And it's just lovely and easy to use. I have used plenty of other cars where you just can't scroll around as nicely and pinch in and out. You might have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. But again, usually with that, you have to kind of zoom out with a button, zoom back in. The screen's not as big. Uh, I love the Tesla software it's great having dog mode is invaluable for us so on a hot day like this we could go into a restaurant and the car would stay nice and cool with a clear message on the screen saying don't worry it's 19 degrees in here I'm perfectly happy and I can even from my app look at what the dog's doing via this camera up here so I can see that the dog's just asleep on the back seat it, it's invaluable and again no other cars really have dog mode if you have a pet it is it's fantastic even just the ease of kind of going, well, I'm just going to nip into the shop, It'll be five minutes, so I'm just going to keep the air conditioning running so the car doesn't get hot again. So you can just keep that running whilst you're in the shop. So I can't complain about this. Do I wish I had Apple CarPlay, Android Auto? Not really, to be honest, because this is so good. Uh, some people would like the head-up display. Yes, I'm not too bothered. It'd be nice to have, but not too bothered. Of course, the big talking point here is the lack of stalks. For me, I've said before with the Long Range Highland, I got used to it, my colleague Ginn said, loves just having the indicator buttons on the steering wheel. The forward and reverse, it normally guesses correctly, so you just put your foot on the brake and it just goes and you end up not thinking about it. I've got used to that. I do appreciate some people will find it a big change. Some people may not get used to it, may find it a fiddle. Uh, I'm sure there's aftermarket kits coming where you could put some stalks on, but for me, like, I've been fine. The materials here, the performance does get this um, nice carbon fiber trim across the top here. And we've got this Al Alcantara lining on the doors. It feels nice, the materials are good. There's no squeaks, no rattles. It, it, it's all good as far as I'm concerned in here. I would just like to have a bit more seat adjustment and a softer headrest. In the back here, where my daughter usually sits, she loves having the screen in the middle here with some headphones. So she might watch a film, maybe listen to music on YouTube. And she loves having that. I mean, I would say for me, it'd be nice to have the screen like right in front of you here. And maybe if you've got two kids, they're going to not agree on what's on the screen. But for my family, my daughter, she absolutely loves having this rear screen. And when we do the longer trips, 
she quite happily sits there for ages just watching the film, listening to music. So that is a good thing. So let's just show you the efficiency of this car since I've had it. So I've done 1,252 miles now, and I've averaged 289 watt hours per mile. But, and there's a big but, two days ago I did spend the day hairing up and down the runway, flat out, filming for another quite well-known car channel. So you'll see some videos about that soon. Typically, I've been getting quite good efficiency with this car on sort of commuting around town and on A and B roads. So this is my drive to work this morning, 2.48 watt hours per mile, and I've seen that a few times now. So that's over four miles per kilowatt hour, and I think that's pretty good. Longer run, on the motorway, I've been getting more like 2.70, 2.80 watt hours per mile. So a bit more down towards the kind of three and a half miles per kilowatt hour. But again, to date, the other performance cars just wouldn't get this kind of efficiency. I don't think a Hyundai Enid 5 would get that kind of efficiency in Taycans, e-tron GT RSs. Maybe the new Taycan, that looks pretty good. But, you know, that's a pretty good number for a car that's this quick. So how does that translate to real world range? So basically, in a nutshell, 240 miles real world range is about the worst case scenario. I had that kind of uh, range pro rata based on wind and rain going down to Cornwall with a loaded car in bad traffic then overtaking other cars and that sort of stuff so that's kind of worst case uh, best case with the good efficiency you get about 300 miles of real world range so in the middle of that lot somewhere kind of 260 270 is about the midpoint of the expected real world range this car which isn't particularly dissimilar to the previous model 3 performance uh, from 2021 onwards and more than the earlier cars but for the performance pretty good efficiency Compare that to a non-performance car, it is probably about 20% less efficient, uh, probably because of the big wheels, wide tires, performance motor. Of course it will be less efficient, it does less miles. But that's still pretty good. And look, just because it's in context, this is a car that can do 0 to 60 in three seconds, but I can charge it from home overnight on cheap electric, and 10,000 miles is gonna cost me about 150 pounds. That's it, in fuel, you know. So the fact it's a bit less efficient doesn't really matter to me because the cost of running it is so cheap anyway. Plus, because I took delivery of this car in this month, Tesla gave me 15,000 miles of free supercharging, which is great. So that's why really this car makes a lot of sense uh, for me. And I nearly bought the Ohio and Dynic 5N, but I love a lot of things about this car. And it's now that it's been refined and we've got the adjustable suspension. So you go to here, dynamics, you've got standard or sport damping, for example, here. Now that it's got that added ride comfort and refinement to it, it's just a car I can spend long days in. It works brilliantly for just taking that edge off of it. It's still fun and sporty when you want it to be, but it still cruises nicely. Yes, a bit of tire drone compared to the long range, but the stereo is very good. That easy wipes that out of the equation. And our original Model 3 performance that we've got has done 107,000 miles and has barely needed anything. We've only just done a little bit of maintenance on that car recently. So if you want to see more about a Model 3 performance done 107,000 miles, including a battery health check, check out our other recent videos. But that's the point. This is a car with that kind of performance that in the course of four years, I could do 100, 120,000 miles in. And if I were to go for something like an Audi RS4 or BMW M3, yes, it would make brum brum noises, but they would cost a lot more to run. It's just not the sort of car you buy if you're doing a high mileage, whereas the Tesla Model 3 really does do a bit of everything really rather well. So it's sounding good so far, isn't it? Well, it is indeed. Let's wrap things up. So there we have it. Like, has it changed much from the previous cars? Is it worth upgrading? Well, you're gonna to have to make that decision. It is an evolution rather than a revolution, but those last little tweaks and bits and pieces have just done a great job of making what was already a very good car into a really, really good all-rounder. And certainly for someone like me, where well, I just appreciate a bit of extra ride and refinement comfort is great. The handling's lovely, it's so fast, it's, it, it's great. I was actually, you know, being honest with you, I was actually a little bit, I wasn't even totally excited about buying this car. I mean, of course, the one that makes sense is the rear wheel drive, the standard range is 20,000 pounds cheaper than this. But, you know, essentially like, if you like a bit of fast, if you are a bit of a petrol head like I am, and you know, it's affordable, then it's a pretty hard car to beat. It is fantastic. Now I've got to be realistic. There are some negatives to it as well. And I've actually made a separate video about the things I don't like about this car. So if you want to check that out, I'll be perfectly frank and honest about all the little bits and niggles that I think maybe I've got room for improvement or I don't like. That's in a separate video. I'll put a link to that in the description below and at the end of this video or just above my head here. So check that out as well. But I basically, for me, I've actually really enjoyed my time so far in this car, more than I thought I would actually. 
and I really appreciated it. So the 2024 Model 3 Performance is a very good car indeed. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stay subscribed for more videos coming soon. And one video coming up soon is when I take this to track faster circuit in the UK and I'll really push its limits and see if it still holds up. Let's see what that's like then. So I'll see you in the next video very soon.